<laughs> Let's talk uh, South Carolina 21, Auburn 17. And, uh, yeah, Brian Harson, this, this thing is quickly headed into the ditch. Now, they do have Alabama at home this weekend, and crazy, crazy, maniacal shit happens in Jordan-Hare Stadium that Thanksgiving weekend every other year for whatever reason. It's always something insane. But this year, there is no Bo Nix magic. We would basically have to see TJ Finley do something that he hasn't done ever, really. So, look. South Carolina did not get out of their game plan. They did exactly what they wanted to do the entire ball game. Auburn came out, was able to score quickly, and and then they did nothing for the rest of the game. They had two touchdowns on their first three drives. One of those was aided by, uh, I mean, it was a short field. Uh, really, both of them were short fields. Uh, the first drive was six plays, 49 yards. The second one was seven plays, 61 yards. After that, I, this was exactly what you would think it would be, right? Three, it like low scoring, a uh, lot of running the football, and Tank Bigsby, 22 carries, 164 yards and a touchdown. You had 149 yards rushing on 41 attempts from South Carolina. None of those were touchdowns. Jason Brown threw three touchdown passes. He had the one interception that led to a touchdown the other way. But this is, this is awesome. Like, I, I love seeing this from teams that are trying to establish a culture, and that's exactly what Shane Beamer is attempting to do. On the other side, I'm, I'm trying to talk really nice about South Carolina <laughs> while also getting to what is going on at Auburn. And obviously, your starting quarterback's out, your kicker's out. you got a couple other guys that are actually out. I'm, I'm so curious about what is going on because I've heard all kinds of, you know, Harson doesn't like it in the SEC, and... He obviously there were a bunch of rumors about he may be going to Washington. Well, that all kind of plays on the idea that he is actually vaccinated, which I don't want to get political on the show. But if he's not vaccinated at Auburn, he can lose his job at the beginning of December. So there may be a lot more going on under the surface here than than anybody really knows. But I I can't figure this football team out. I don't know what Auburn is because I've seen them play really really good multiple times, and also seen them play really bad. Next week, by the way, huge for our buddy Kyle on the BetUS show because he has got Auburn under seven wins, and <laughs> he certainly needs to cash that one. So, yeah, I'm I'm curious. What what did you think about this one? Because I, I wasn't shocked by this. I, I had bet South Carolina, but this Auburn team does not look like the same team that we saw just along the lines of scrimmage just a few weeks ago. Yeah, I, I had a... I haven't gone too deep into their injury issues, but it, but it does seem, I mean, like Texas A&M just absolutely murdered. And then Mississippi state, they just gave up. I mean, I don't know how you lose that game. You just, you just give up. And then this game, it, it, again, I don't, I don't know that it came down to whether that gentleman touched the ball or not, but I think that's a hilarious sec ending regardless. Yes. And that if you're Auburn, you should not be in a situation in a game that you're favored by more than a touchdown of needing, um, a microscope to decide whether you lost possession on a punt or not. Um, I, I really think that um, one, if Auburn opens, dude, uh, I'm going to use my one curse word. Sorry. Shit is going to get wild. <laughs> wild. Yes. It's, um, it's already a crazy coaching carousel season anyway. And we know it's going to get yeah. even more crazy, but God, you want to talk about fun hypotheticals. If, if Lincoln were to take the LSU job and then Josh Heupel, takes the uh, the Oklahoma job, because I'm, I'm sure that he would be one of the next ones up, right, because of, of what he's done at Tennessee. If you have... Yeah, but they fired him. I don't know they like it. Anyway, go, go, go. Yeah, that's I, fine. I, that's I agree. Uh, but it, it say, say they've got Heupel that, that Oklahoma brings in after one season. So Tennessee loses a coach after one season. Auburn loses a coach after one season. Imagine all of this other crap going on, right? If you have Tennessee and Auburn both open in the same cycle again, a year later. Like, without a bunch of NCAA stuff and whatever else. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> we feasibly could have, in two weeks, Gary, we could have Miami, Virginia Tech, Florida, Auburn, LSU, Washington, UCA, USC, Washington State, TCU. Am I missing one? You you could go on and toss in Penn State in there if uh, Franklin leaves for one of those other jobs. Uh, you but can, then that solves one of the other problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we could have a lot of big, big programs that are... You know who might get paid? Uh, I have no idea who might get paid at Barry? this point. 
Barry Odom might get paid this cycle. Tennessee or Auburn could do way worse on this short notice in this market. I think Barry Odom would need to go somewhere where the fan base will not be so openly negative because you know both of those will be, right? <laughs> like there are some yeah. fan bases where I mean, he could go. I'm at the point, I wouldn't take, I, I don't think I would take either of those jobs. Tennessee, God, yeah, the, just what I've seen from Tennessee fans this year with like the the slightest improvement in situation and them still to be complaining. Like, yeah, I, I don't know that I would take either of those. Yes. Uh, it's going to be weird. I wonder if more people aren't going to try and do like Colorado hired Carl Durrell. Like, yeah, which by the way, Colorado won. It's not one of my games that I wrote down, but Colorado beat Washington yesterday. Like, yeah, I, I really needed Washington to win that ball game so that so I could go and cash, uh, cash my under there. But uh, but alas, here we are. We've got a few questions in the chat here. Will let's see. Will Florida State uh, be able to retain? No, no, no. Will Nevada Reno be able to retain Jay Norvell? I thought he was talking about Mike Norvell. Ball Python Love said, I hope so. He signed until 2024. The way that things are going, I could certainly see Jay Norvell getting a job. Um, but, I mean, obviously it all it all depends. It all depends. The last two weeks have not helped him at all. If he leaves, bring back Chris Alt. Yeah, I could <laughs> I could totally see that. Gary Lewis said, great point about Harson and inoculation. It's why I tune in. I learn from you guys every week. Chris Alt and Dennis Erickson, two of the greatest offensive minds in college football during their era. Alt's pistol formation is still used in the NFL and college football right now. It is. It absolutely that, that pistol formation, Alabama loves running stuff out of that pistol. They have not done so much under Bill O'Brien, but yeah, they they have run a pistol a lot. Let's see. Great out west uh, college football head coaching candidate, Kalen DeBoer of Fresno. Yes, DeBoer for sure. But you got to be – Fresno was like the perfect fit for him as far as being a head coach because there is a ton of support. Like, they they really give him basically everything that he that he needs. Baylor staff is going to get picked at, said Larry. And Gary Lewis said, I'm not a huge Jay Norvell fan. I was not a huge Jay Norvell fan. I will tell you this. I, I like Jay Norvell. Like, I, I don't think that he's a guy that you expect to win, like, championships from. But I think he's a guy that can like build a foundation for a program. It's it's very much a Mike Leach kind of thing with what he runs. Like you're always going to run up against somebody that knows how to stop it. But for the most part, if yeah. you're wanting to get from the bottom up to about the middle tier, he's like a really, really good coach. It's it's very much Chris Creighton at uh at Eastern Michigan for me. Like he's somebody that's gonna win in, in some some years he'll do some years he will be eight and four. Some years nine and three, but for the most part, you're hovering around bowl game territory, and for some programs, that's really good. So, yeah, that's the way I feel about that. We I think are just there's taking- a couple of interesting guys out west, like Kurt Maddox, the San Diego State head coach, has been around and and doesn't necessarily have the Brady Hope stink on him. I mean, his defense has been great for a while and and really innovative. I know a bunch of guys like like his clinic videos and stuff. Yeah. I wonder how long until the Kendall, speaking of stink, I wonder how long until somebody can hire Kendall Bryles as their head coach. That's, um, I would think soon. Like, I, yeah, I think, I think we're getting there. Yeah. And then the other one that is interesting is uh, at Kent State, Sean Lewis and Andrew Souter. That offensive coordinator was a Bryles guy at Baylor. I think that people would like him Kent, for sure. So Kent interesting State, to see if, if somebody, Texas adjacent, hires them. If, uh, if Kent State wins the MAC this year, I would almost guarantee he's gone this season. Yeah. Because right now it looks like it's Kent State and Northern Illinois, and Kent State already beat them once. So, yep. you know, we, I could I could certainly see that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.